You've been faithfully paying your medical aid contributions only to have the carpet pulled from under your feet. With minimal warning, you're told the cover you thought you had will soon be gone. Signing up to a new scheme is a tough enough challenge if you're perfectly healthy. But what if you're on chronic care and skipping a day could mean the difference between life and death? Masa investigates another apparent case of money before members. It's been a month of high drama for a small medical scheme called Health Squared. They promised complete cover from every angle, but failed to mention they were in financial trouble. Without warning, they applied for voluntary liquidation in August, and 14,000 members and 23,000 dependents were given two weeks to find another medical scheme. For those of us lucky enough to have private health insurance, it's one of the first things we budget for. But what happens when your medical scheme suddenly closes down and you're no longer covered? If I don't do dialysis within a week, I'm dead. That is my reality. It's sunrise on a Monday morning and Sharon Wayson is being dropped off by her mother, Vanessa, for treatment at Life Always Hospital in Johannesburg. She's in end-stage renal failure, so this routine is repeated three times a week without fail. I was diagnosed with systemic lupus at the age of 10. I never had a proper childhood, I would say. So when Sharon was diagnosed with lupus, the doctor did call me in and said that her kidneys could go into renal failure down the line. And before I know it, she's 30 years old. And her kidneys are functioning at 0% and with dialysis at 2%. Sharon's been waiting five years for a kidney transplant. She used to be a professional gamer, but her fragile health forced her to retire. Last year, March, I actually landed up dying. That to resuscitate me. What happened? I, um, I bled internally um, from complications from lupus and kidney failure. Sharon's nephrologist is Dr. Rachel Dizieu. She had a lupus flare and she had inflammation of the blood vessels in her colon. She essentially just bled out um, and she needed huge volumes of, of fluid and blood resuscitation in the intensive care unit. And all those massive fluid shifts put a lot of strain on her heart. So in this household, medical aid must be a uh, non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Yeah. How long have you been on medical aid? So with Health Squared, uh, we've been on since um, 2007. They were members of Resolution Health, which merged with Spectrumed in 2018 to form Health Squared. Every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, Sharon has a four-hour dialysis session. Health Squared has covered the dialysis. And that comes to about any, I think about 30, 35,000 a month. Did you even know that Health Squared was in trouble no, at this point? No. We received an email on the 18th of August telling us from the 1st of September we need to find a new medical scheme that gives you eight working days. I mean, how, how can they do that? Sharon, unfortunately, has got no residual kidney function left at all. She wouldn't survive two weeks without dialysis. In fact, I don't even know if she would survive one. According to Health Squared administered by Agility, high COVID-19 related claims, an aging member profile, and a high proportion of pensioners had left the scheme with less than 3% reserves by July this year. A solvency ratio is the measure of a scheme's ability to pay claims. In 2019, they had a solvency ratio just under 20 odd percent, which is outside of the, the requirements of the, of, of the Council for Medical Scheme. Solvency ratios have to run at 25 percent. Mark Hyman serves on the Fraud, Waste and Abuse Advisory Committee of the CMS. Council for Medical Schemes became aware of this and as far back as 2019 had been negotiating with Health Squared to get the solvency ratio increased. By the end of December 2021, the solvency ratio of Health Squared was at 
Many members have asked why the Council for Medical Schemes didn't see this coming. Well, they did. So why didn't they do something about it? They say they tried, but the Board of Health Squared resisted the appointment of a statutory manager last year, an intervention that could have helped to turn things around. A statutory manager takes control of a scheme to steer it back to financial solvency. Sharon and other members in renal failure got a lifeline on the 4th of September when the court ordered Health Square to cover treatment for 54 dialysis patients and members suffering from grave life-threatening risks until the end of September. But Health Square ignored that order when the access graft to Sharon's femoral artery became blocked. I was on the dialysis machine and um, it just started beeping. She needed surgery to open the graft, but the hospital pre-authorization was rejected by Health Squared. I was shaking and I was in tears because there's a court order in place. So that was Friday. Saturday morning, I then get a call from Four Ways Life Hospital. She says, I'm sorry, unfortunately, we are no longer accepting Health Squared members. What does that mean? We can't go there on Monday for Sharon's operation. That's what it means. What I would equate it to is if you go scuba diving and you're sitting at the bottom at 30 meters and someone takes your regulator away and says, good luck. Oh no. It's her lifeline and she requires it three times a week and someone has just taken it away from her. And I said to the lady, do you know that there is a court order in place? She says, yes, I know but we are not accepting Health Squared members. Life Healthcare denied this, saying that at no stage was the patient in question refused admission to or treatment at Life Always Hospital. Our standard process was followed and we informed the patient that as the authorization was declined by Health Squared, a private admission was necessary. But that's not what Carte Blanche was told when our producer called Life Always on that same day. From this recording, it is pretty clear that all Health Squared members will no longer be treated at the hospital unless they have a new medical aid or pay cash. So Life Healthcare has sent communication through to the hospital that we will no longer be having any dealings with Health Squared. So all their patients, either they present us with a new medical aid or we do a pre-estimate for them. Right. So it's a life healthcare decision, it's not a hospital decision. The financial implication alone would have precluded her from having that procedure. Where does a young girl of 30, unemployed because of her condition, find the money? So we launched that court application. Mark Hyman runs a service called MediCheck, which has set up a Health Squared hotline helping members in this exact predicament. And we submitted to the urgent court in Johannesburg an urgent application to ensure that an authorization was provided by 2 p.m. that afternoon um, and that the hospital agreed to admit the patient into the hospital. That authorization was approved at 1.50 on Sunday afternoon. The court has placed Health Squared under the provisional curatorship of Joe Solwani. He's been investigating what went wrong. The last AGM was for the year 2020. Even in that year, the scheme had made over 100 million losses. In 2021, the death spiral starts coming through that says you are starting to spend all the money that you receive in contribution in paying claims, and you are left with nothing to pay for the non-healthcare costs. From 2019 to 2022, Health Squared spent 90 million rand on marketing to try and promote the brand. But it didn't work. Instead of attracting new members, they lost over 9,000 members. And along with them, went their monthly premiums. He also believes the Board of Trustees played a significant role in the scheme's demise. For a scheme of this size to spend 3.2 million per annum on trustees, to me it is way above what the market would do for a similar size with similar challenges.
Tsholwane is determined to do a thorough investigation before the scheme is liquidated. You can't save it now. What you need to do is to give a decent winding up. That does not become so urgent to wind up, to cover up. Last week, Sharon was accepted as a member of Discovery Health and is still hoping to find a suitable match for a kidney transplant. At the end of the day, I'm still grateful for life. I could have not been here and uh, I got a second chance. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access carte blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.